Rebecca Brand, and today we're making nachos. These are the cheesiest, most vegetarian, delicious nachos on the planet. And your imagination's allowed to run wild with this one. The ingredients for this dish are the tortilla chips. Any kind in the bag is fine. If you want to make them homemade, check out my recipe on my channel. Beans, tomatoes, and then some kind of onions. I've got red onions and green onions. I've got some peppers fresh. Cheese, salsa, and to top it off, I'm putting on sour cream for extra richness. I want to encourage you to make these at home because they're super easy. And instead of buying those nachos bella grande at Taco Bell or wherever you get yours, you can make them at home for a fraction of the price. I want them really hearty for my main dish. So I'm putting beans on them. And these are homemade pinto beans. They're so easy to make homemade, but you have to have them soak overnight. So sometimes that kind of slows you down. Use a can of beans, that's fine, and any kind you like. So you just spread them over. It's so simple, just a little here, a little there. The next ingredient I add is chopped tomatoes. And the reason why this comes second is, I don't want the juice of the tomatoes to liquefy and get onto my tortilla chips because I want to make them soggy. So I put them on top of the beans. I aim for those beans as like the layer that's going to protect those tortilla chips because I want a really crunchy nacho. I'm adding a chopped fresh pepper because I love these, but you can have jarred jalapenos or skip this and just go for the salsa. So sprinkle this on next. And I'm kind of getting the outside of those tortilla chips because I want these to kind of cook and get soft. And those tomatoes and beans are like hogging all the space on here. I'm putting on grated Mexican cheeses, but it can be grated any kind of cheeses in your kitchen. People always go for the bite that has the most cheese on it, so I don't skip. Have at it with a quantity. A lot is fine. You are not getting a ticket. I have this foil down because if I didn't have the foil down on my baking sheet, that cheese is going to stick and make a big mess. It's going to be hard to clean. So I'm happy to have a piece of foil as that barrier layer for my cleanup routine later. Personal preferences, I like my chopped onions on next. And the reason is, if that onion heats up a little bit, it's going to sweeten it. It won't make it as tart in my mouth and as tangy hot. I think that helps my dinner companion as well. He or she is going to be appreciative later. <laughs> and I have green onions that I chopped up and cilantro. Oh man, yum. I do not suggest you put your salsa on at this point because it's going to make everything soggy. That's for later. My oven's been preheating at 425. It's time to put it in. I'm putting it on the top rack because that is where the hottest heat is at the 425 oven. I'm going to leave it in there for six to eight minutes until that cheese melts. It's been exactly six minutes. I started to smell them. I need to take them out. Oh, wow. Look at those. That is unbelievable. I can't wait to dive right in. Look at the bubbles happening there. Yummy! This is such a special fast dinner to make on a weeknight. I love this. Now, I am not saying you need to have tortilla chips every night for dinner, but once in a while, let's have it. It's a great Viva La Fiesta kind of party night for me. I'm putting all my favorite goodies on this one bite for extra lusciousness. Let's try it. Mm. I'm telling you, that is the most satisfying food I think on the planet. I love this. Subscribe to my channel and let's keep making great things in the kitchen. Viva la fiesta! Here's to homemade nachos in five minutes. <laughs> Happy Cinco de Mayo! <laughs>